Welcome to Punchline Talks, International Women's Day. My guest today is, is Rachel Bishop of Gloucester, Rachel Tree Week. Uh, hello, Rachel. Welcome to Punchline Talks. Hello, Mark. Good to see you. It, it's uh, it's fantastic to talk to you. I'm really interested in, in your views of International Women's Day and what it means to you. Mm. I think it's fabulous that we have an International Women's Day uh, every year. I think it's that opportunity to really celebrate women and I think particularly to make women visible in those places, those areas perhaps where women are a bit more hidden or particularly in workplaces and businesses where perhaps women, um, we still don't have that high number of women in leadership, particularly in certain sectors. Um, for me across the church and in the community, particularly saying to uh, girls, I'm always very keen to say to girls, um, look, I want you to be the people you've been created to be. What is it that you are going to become when you grow up? And I think it's wonderful on International Women's Day when um, girls and young women can see women in all different sectors um, across the community, across business. And I guess the other part of it for me is also being aware of that word international. You know, I'm very aware here that as a bishop, as a female leader, I have that great privilege. Um, but in many countries, particularly at the moment, I think of Afghanistan and Iran, where girls and women simply don't have those opportunities to use their gifts and skills. And so I want to say to girls and women in this country, where we do have those opportunities and choices, um, dare to step forward dare to discover who you are. And what do you think could be done more to sort of achieve equality in the workplace? What could business leaders do to, to, to make that happen? Yes, I'm always aware of um, avoiding generalizations, but one thing um, is true of many women, not all women, is that they need to be encouraged to see their gifts and skills. So. But in my own story, um, I would never have applied for a number of the roles that I have taken. Before I was ordained, I was a speech and language therapist. And um, I ended up, my final job was in uh, a middle management role. I would never have applied for those roles if it hadn't been for having people around me who really encouraged me um, and pushed me. I... I have been told that many years ago um, there was some research done within, I think it was in the FTSE 100, where there was um, some research, the way that women responded to adverts in business. And uh, I'm sure this is slightly apocryphal, but that women would look at a, a job description and say, I can do that, that, that and that, but I can't do that and that, so I won't apply. And that men would say, I can do that, that, that and that. I can't really do that and that, but I can probably blag it. Now, that's, that's probably an Pretty awful generalisation. And people will be shouting now as they hear me say this. But I tell that story simply because I know in my own life, I've needed that encouragement for people to say, go on, have a go. You've got those gifts and skills and you can learn these other things. And I think often um, girls and women uh, need people around them to encourage them to go for those things. And I think that also, I think, Mark, um, raises issues about the way that we put out adverts, the way that we shape job descriptions, the sort of language we use. Again, there's been research on the sort of language that many women will respond to. Um, how do we how do we use um words even around assertion, what do we mean by that? Whereas if we mean uh, enablers and uh, people who can enable other people and be good leaders, there's different sort of language we can use that I think will appeal to some women and some men. Uh, we need to be thinking about those kind of things. And certainly in schools and in our colleges, talking about the sort of opportunities there are um, I think I think the theme for this International Women's Day is on uh, the digital world and technology, um, and I think recognizing that gap that perhaps we need more women in in those spheres of life. So how do we encourage uh, girls and women to step into those spaces? 
I mean, here in Gloucestershire, I'm, I'm always impressed of, of, uh, of uh, women leaders. You know, we have a lot of, of, of managing directors and directors, CEOs, uh, entrepreneurs, really at the forefront of some huge companies here in Gloucestershire. That must be encouraging for someone like yourself as well, you know, to, to see these people striding forward. And, and hopefully they, they help, don't they? They help encourage other, other young people to, to see that if they can do it, they could, you know, if, if you could reach that level, then they can do it as well. Yeah, I think it's hugely encouraging. And I, one of the many things I love about Gloucestershire and the surrounding areas is that um, there's a real can-do attitude. I think there is the attitude of um, give it a go and people really wanting to do things for the flourishing of our communities and many women leading in our businesses and our communities and our charity sector. And as you say, the more that we we see that, the more normal it becomes. I mean, when I was growing up, you would never have seen a female bishop. It wasn't possible. Um, I heard a lovely story of a child who... Um, said to their father, who is a, a priest, um, who was joking about uh, doing something on my behalf. And apparently this child said, well, you can be a bishop. And when the father said, why not? The child said, because you haven't got a la-di-da-di-da -da voice, meaning you don't sound like a woman. And I thought that was fantastic because here's a child now thinking, actually a bishop has to be has to be a woman. I, th I think the other side to that, which is a bit of a paradox, but is that um, we can also think we need role models for everything. And one thing that was said to me uh, when I first became um, a female priest at a time when it had only just been possible for women to become priests, one thing was said to me when I said, oh, I haven't got any role models. There haven't been women priests, a female priest ahead of me. A very wise person said to me, why do you need a role model? You're called to be who you are. And so I guess there's that two sides. Yes, I want girls and women to see women in leadership and in business and in our charity sectors across the whole sphere of life. I also want them to be who they are. This isn't about any of us trying to be someone else. It's saying whether we're boys, girls, men, women, who are we? And as a Christian, I would say, who are we created to be? We're all created differently. No two people are the same. I believe we're created in the image of God, but I want everyone to be themselves. And I found that really encouraging as I've gone on through life. That's a great place to stop. We've run out of time. Thank you ever so much, Bishop Rachel. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining Punchline Talks. Thank you, Mark.